Hey, we're back at this for another week. Um, only two more weeks left, so this week and next week. Um, topic four is conditional probability. Um, so we will start right away into this with a definition. So at the top of your page, you can put down conditional probability, um, and you can write the definition. It assesses the likelihood of an event based on the knowledge that another event has occurred. Feel free to stop the video here. We're going to go through an example and then talk about this uh, again. Okay, so our example here is number one. Suppose for an outdoor party, you have a cooler filled with the following drinks. Okay, so you can look at this. We have 10 Cokes. If they have a star next to them, these drinks have caffeine. We have 12 Diet Cokes, which obviously has caffeine. And if it says low next to it, these drinks are low in calories. So those are low. Six Mountain Dews, caffeine. Six Ginger Ales, none of the above. 10 Love and Seltzers, not caffeinated, but is low. And six Lime Seltzers, not caffeinated, but is low in calories. Okay, so you grab a can at random from the cooler. What's the probability that you grabbed a low calorie drink? Okay, so we are finding the probability of, and then in the middle, I'm going to just put low because that's our event. So our event is that we grabbed one that was low. We want to find the probability of that event. So that's how you write them. Okay, so we're going to make a fraction. You want to always, I always start at the bottom of the fraction is how many do I have total? So I had all of these in my cooler. If I add all of these up, 10, 12 and 6, we have 28. Um, 6, 10 and 6, we have 22. So that's a total of 50. So there are 50 cans that you are blindly choosing from. Okay. What's the probability that you grab the low calorie drink? So only looking at the low calorie drinks. Okay. So we have 12 and 10 is 22 and 6 is 28. So that is going to be the number on top. It's the number of outcomes that would make it through out of the number of total um, and this, if you want to give it, again, you can give reduced fractions, decimals, or percents. This comes out to 0 0.56 or 56%. Okay, so the probability of low is 56%. Now, similar scenario, you grab a can at random from the cooler. Knowing that the lime seltzer is your least favorite drink, a friend says, lucky you, you didn't grab a lime seltzer. So what I want you to imagine right now is that you closed your eyes, you grabbed a can, you held it up. You still have your eyes closed. You still do not know what it is, but your friend was able to look at it and say, you did not grab a lime seltzer. So even though your eyes are closed, your probability has changed. Okay. So given this information, now we're going to still find that probability of a low calorie drink. Okay. Um, but this is really with some given information. And so that's why it's showing you this idea here is because technically you're not finding low anymore. You're finding low if we remove something from it. So eyes are so closed. There were 50 cans in there, but they said it's not a lime seltzer. I can go back to this idea. There were six lime seltzers. And since my friend said that, I know that that's not in there. So I'm now down to 44 drinks. I did 50 minus six. Okay. Of those 44 drinks. Okay. So we are imagining these do not exist. Of those 44 drinks, how many of those are low calorie? So not only do some of our low calorie drinks go away, the only low calories we have are these 22 here, but our total also went away. So this comes out to 0.5 or 50%. Okay. And again, this really is not the probability of low. This is the probability of a low calorie drink given that it was not a lime seltzer. Okay. But that's how we um, got our answer there. So what does this bring us to? In question one, each can in the cooler is equally likely to be selected. Okay, so A is the event of randomly selecting a low calorie drink and B is the event of grabbing a can that is not a lime seltzer. So essentially not a lime seltzer is B and low calorie drink is A. Okay, in 1B, you computed the probability of A given B. That's how you read that without using a formula. Okay, in situations of equally likely outcomes, the formula below can be used to compute probability of A given B. Now, I am going to tell you a lot of times I do this just based on intuition. So I think through it and say, okay, what is B? Narrow down my bottom number based on that. And then of those that we're talking about, what is um, in A? Okay, and that's what these two are. So the probability of A given B is the number of outcomes in the intersection out of the number of outcomes in just B. So if we do that for this example, let A be the event of randomly selecting a low calorie drink and be the event of randomly selecting non lime seltzer, determine the number of outcomes in A intersect B, okay? So A intersect B, where do they intersect with each other? We look at our non-lime seltzers. So that's everything except for the lime seltzer. I'm going to go back to this. 
that's everything except for this. Okay. And then we're looking at where does that intersect with these? Okay. So we are down to 22 for that intersection number. Okay. So 22 is where that's looking at. Determine the number of outcomes in just B. Okay. So B again is the not lime seltzer. So if we go back to that list and say, okay, what's not a lime seltzer? We just get rid of these six. 50 minus six is 44. And so we figure that number to be um, 44. Okay, so if we use the probability of A given B, that formula, it says to put the number of outcomes in A intersects B on top, so that intersection was 22, and the number of outcomes in just B on the bottom, and that was 44, and here this comes out still to 0.5 or 50%. Okay, compare your answer to that of question 1B, you should essentially answer that they are the same. Okay, we're using very similar reasoning. The difference here is we're looking at the formula versus just kind of using intuition and um, going through it and doing it. Okay, so number three, then let A be the event of grab randomly grabbing a cola. So either a Coke or a Diet Coke. Okay, so if we're talking about event A, we had 10 Cokes and we had 12 Diet Cokes. Okay, so event A has 22 in it. And let B be the event of randomly grabbing a non-caffeinated drink. So remember, the caffeinated drinks had the stars. So the non-caffeinated would be a ginger ale, a lemon seltzer, or a lime seltzer. And that also happens to have 22. Okay, But we're going to find the probability of A given B. Okay, So what this is saying, and you always start at the end. So we start with the bottom. We start at the end. We know that B occurred. So we know, we go back through here. B is the event of grabbing a non-caffeinated drink. I know I grabbed one of these 22 right here. Okay, so I'm looking only at 22 um, sodas. I'm not looking at the full 50. Okay, so if 22 sodas of these 22, which ones of these are A? Okay, so where does it intersect? So these are the ginger ales, not Cokes. Okay, these are the um, lemon seltzers, not Cokes. And these are the lime seltzers, not Cokes. So how many of them are in the intersection? The answer here is zero, okay? Which zero out of 22 then is gonna give you zero or zero percent. And yes, you can get a zero percent and yes, you can get a um, hundred percent. But this is the probability of finding a Coke or a Diet Coke given that it did not was non-caffeinated, okay? So that being said, I want you to work through the West, rest of the worksheet. Check your answers as you go. I did just copy them right here if you wanna use those or you can go look at the um, notes or the homework answers okay um check your answers as you go don't check them at the end check them as you go make sure you're doing this correctly there are some really important concepts here so if you don't understand something as you work send me an email and ask and i am more than happy to make another video or anything if you don't understand the whole thing just let me know so i can make that video too okay good luck and i will see you next time